Okay, we got an, we got someone else that's not named Dave in here now. We got Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, scary there. So I'm gonna do something a little different too. Uh, Dave uh, asked me about color corrections today, um, and I was actually looking for a kind of a topic to to use or to for something to go over. Um, so I'm gonna do first part is gonna be kind of a hard skill. I'm gonna show you uh, how I build up this image. It's a kitchen image I shot recently at this crazy house. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go through that and then um, um, and then so I'm gonna build I'm gonna do that that image and then <laughs> sorry I'm just, there's like uh, stuff happening on here and I'm like what's going on here um, so anyways I'm gonna go from start to finish I'll show you like how I built up the flash on it and stuff and then um, I'll process it and then I'm gonna show you the color corrections part of it at the end um, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to do color corrections I'm gonna do one in Photoshop and then I'll do one in Lightroom um, and you can kind of take your pick on which method you like um, but it's not really anything you know not too crazy they're both pretty easy um but i'm just waiting for for my wife to get in here so i can she's going to come on at five she's about to get off of work um but i'm going to grab she, a drink real quick okay yeah go for it <laughs> hopefully it's whiskey or something right yeah that's what's just <laughs> i got my water but, uh, so yeah, i got water too Oh, no, it's iced tea. Yeah, that's a nice image. Yeah, that the ballroom in them? I don't know what No, that no, is. your image, the kitchen. I oh, the kitchen? The oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, I get I get to shoot some cool places, so I'm happy with yeah, that. Yeah, I hear nice. you on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, being in California, Santa Barbara has a lot of cool houses, too. Oh my gosh. I yeah. yeah, a lot of them I can't post though because they're celebrities and, and things like that. Yeah. And they don't want, you know, the homes online or anything. Which is unfortunate, yeah. but I did a super famous guy on um last Sunday. Very famous. Oh really? Yeah. Well, who is it? <laughs> I can't tell can't you, say. but he lives under the sea. Under the sea. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah. Oh, Jason oh. Momoa? No. <laughs> no, he's yeah. Oh, no. Nice. The Aquaman, right? <laughs> wow. I Where was gonna say I was gonna okay? say the the director. Uh what's his name? Uh the older guy who's really into he's into directing films, but he also has a submarine and he's very active. Oh, um he did yeah, that guy. <laughs> Cameron. James Cameron. Yes, James Cameron, yes, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, not him. I just learned that I photographed. Kaczynski, John Kaczynski and Emma Watson's house. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I just found out just the other day, I was looking online and I happened to see an image that was mine. And I thought, wait a minute, I, that's my image. It said, you know, copyright Zillow and um, turned yeah. out to be their house in Ojai. So that was kind of cool. I didn't get to meet them. They, they weren't there when I photographed. I didn't know who the house belonged to. This yeah. is what I've only got fun. to meet like the celebrities I've the houses I've got to shoot I never really got to meet anybody like super high caliber but I've met a couple pro skaters and um a couple athletes but I became friends with one Michael Keaton oh really yeah he's actually a very cool guy I photographed a couple of his homes well he I heard that he's uh he's doing the new Beetlejuice again too right yeah. I, I think so I think I can't yeah, wait I, I, I don't has it been has that been announced I haven't seen I saw a couple of posts about okay. it. I think um, Winona Ryder was saying that the only way that she would do it is if everybody on the first one was involved. So I think I think they got the go ahead on that and everybody's in. That'll yeah. be cool. Yeah, super cool. Um, that was one of my favorite movies growing up. So I'm excited for that one. I did Larry David's house once. Oh, I love you know, he guy. just bought a house right down the street from me up here. I'm in Santa Barbara. Okay. I haven't seen him around town yet, but um, I may have photographed it before he bought it. I, I have to look it up. I don't know the address, but I'll have to find it. I He's grew up in Arroyo Grande. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty close. So, yeah, we used to love doing San Marcos Pass. My wife had a um, a little Alfa Romeo. Well, oh, nice. Marcos. Oh, it was so much fun. 
that's a dangerous area though you know at night a lot of drunk people and it's pretty dangerous at night well that was 30 40 years ago too oh yeah well yeah <laughs> oh my wife's here hi babe <laughs> um, hi everyone have a good hello um she's gonna just help out today and kind of let me know if anybody's um messaging or anything like that um when i'm getting into the the photoshop and stuff i won't be able to that kind of show everything, everything going on there's jason babe he just shot jason momoa's house no, I, mean, I shouldn't have, i guess oh can i say that <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh How don't tell anyone that. hi yeah. Mary has a crush on him, so. <laughs> nice guy in the world, you know, seriously, really, really a nice guy. That's oh, cool. That is awesome. That is such a cool opportunity for you. Where are you, Dave? What part of the country? Salt Lake. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Just just east of Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit east. <laughs> uh, a tiny east. <laughs> we got some friends out there, actually. They were uh, just in town recently, and they used to be our next-door neighbors, so pretty cool to see them um they want us to go out there so maybe you could let me know which house is jason momoa's and we'll go go by there i guess he's he's, he's moving huh <laughs> it was an investment property he did not live there oh yeah no and i don't even know why he was out there but he was like cool dude you've got a drone let's play with it and i was like <laughs> yeah you can buy me 10 more if you wreck it so yeah <laughs> here's a controller water. yeah <laughs> that's so cool but he was like a little kid, you know. Oh, that's yeah. cool, man. Wow. He's all excited. <laughs> that's fun. Um, all right. So now that you're here, babe, um, I kind of already told everybody that um you're gonna help me just kind of manage the meeting and stuff and let people in and let me know about messages or whatever. Um, I'm gonna jump into this processing and we'll get through this part and then uh then we can just open it up for questions after that. Okay. All right. All right, so let me see. I got to remember how to do this. Uh, share screen. There we go. Giant green button on there. All right. Can you all see it? Yep. All right, cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with this part. Let me move this out of the way. So just go to one okay all right so here's the kitchen um one thing i want to note real quick is uh, i shot this at 38 millimeters so one of my favorite things to do if i can is to back up and zoom in um it really helps just compress everything and uh, makes for a, a nicer looking image so um that's that's step one on composition is back up as as far as you really can and then zoom in or whatever and i'm not i'm going to go over some of this just so not for you guys necessarily dave or whatever but um for whoever's watching this later i just want to try to throw as many tips out there as i can while i'm going through this um so here's the ambient one of the ambients is the darker one which i'm going to end up using for the blend um and then here is my first flash layer uh while i was building the flash up so I just put a, um, there was a shoot through umbrella off to the camera left, um, shooting straight into the room. It looks like most of it was kind of hitting in the dining room, but kind of skimming into the kitchen as well. Um, so that was my first light. I was making sure there's no reflections in this marble, um, but you can kind of see the light stand right here. So I just kind of lifted it up to where it wasn't showing in the, in the reflection there. Um, next shot is... I bounced my 400 up into the ceiling um, along with the other shoot through. So building up the light a little bit more, just kind of bring the light up in the kitchen area. And then the last image is, this is the one we'll use for the blend, but you can see here on the left, I just had a, a little kiss of light coming in from the hallway. Um, there was a, a skylight there, but it wasn't doing too much. So I just tried to mimic that area a little bit and just bring up some shadows in there. So I had something kind of, um, well balanced in here to start with um but so first thing is i'm going to get this one all ready to go so i hit my ambient layer blend this kind of brings down some highlights brings up shadows um 
and dust sharpening and a couple other things does a little bit of the desaturation. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull it up to that top third. So if you look on the histogram, my spike is happening right between the midtones and the highlights. And then there's the brights over here. So I try to get my images before the blend to land right in this area. Um, this is where I want my final image to be. This just seems to be kind of my favorite place as far as luminosity goes. Um, but that's that's one thing to just kind of keep in mind when you're getting stuff ready. Um, so over here, you can see the highlights are a little bit strong. So you can pull that down a little bit. Um, otherwise, looks pretty good. Um, I, I like the desaturated tones in here. I don't want any heavy casts of light or blues, warm light, anything like that. Any casts, I want to try to just pull them down a little bit so it's a little more easier to, to correct later. Um, then we're going to go to the flash. And I just hit my flash preset. It's kind of the same thing, um, a little bit uh, less on the desaturation because hopefully the the flash light color is kind of dominating all of the tones. So <laughs> we'll see more consistent color throughout this image, hopefully. Um, and this is where I want to pull the color from in the blend. So that's that's perfect. And then you can see how the spike is in the highlights here. So I'm going to just bring this down a little bit to where it's landing right on that same point. Um, then color balance wise, you can go in here and kind of see if you can pick a white spot or try auto if you're not happy with it. Um, I think auto looks pretty good. So this this does a lot of the heavy lifting as far as color cast go, but you can still see there's a little bit of green here. It must be from the film on that skylight. And then there's a little bit of green here. And I think it's just, you know, ambient light coming in and stuff. Um, but I'll show you how to fix all that later. Um, so these two images, I'm going to take them and open them as layers in Photoshop. Give it a second to process. Are you guys following around, uh, following so far? Mm -hmm. What size umbrella was that? It looks pretty soft. I think it's a 33 inch. Oh, okay. Not too I large. Just got it. Yeah, it's not too big, not too small. Um, I don't like having to have giant modifiers if I can avoid it just because it's so crazy to bring them around inside the house and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't want to like knock anything. Oh. And so the intermediate flashes you just totally avoided. Just the, the final flash where you added the one, the light from the left. Yeah. Built everything up. And yeah. The, okay. Yeah, so... That's that's one of the reasons I like to use multiple flashes, um, because you can kind of you can do that build up here, you know, um, get your key light going, then some fill and then any accent lights are just kind of you. I could have gone through and popped light in onto the stove and stuff. But once you have it built up, it's it looks pretty straight. So um, if I can get as close as I want to be, I there's not really any reason to put any more effort into getting the lighting you know you can do some dodge and burn or whatever but we could always make things more complicated but i think knowing when like when to hold off and stop is a good place i mean you got to know that stuff or else you just be in a like remember last time that dude was talking about how he would do 15 flash pops around the room and a lot of it's unnecessary so i try to get where i want to be at i look at the image on the back of the ipad or whatever on the ipad and if it's looking good then i'm good with that I can do everything else in post. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Got so much latitude these days, you know. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on. Time's okay. money. So flash and, uh, and ambient here. Um, I'm going to just drop that down. Uh, and I want my flash layer on top. because That's just how I blend. Um, I have a, a preset here that's going to do all my, my work for me. Um, I'll hit it right now. You, on my other tutorials, I kind of showed what that preset does, but for time, I'm just going to hit it and then I'll explain. So first thing was the flash layer got a gray mask put on it. So now it's kind of a 50-50 mix between the ambient and the flash. The next layer up is where I'm going to pull highlights from in the flash layer. So it's set to darken mode. And when you brush onto it, it's only going to darken the image in those areas that you want to um, affect. So Let's see, I'll pull that up in 
Make sure that brush is small or soft. Let's so it see. looks like Lightroom is still showing. Yeah, I'm seeing Lightroom. Yeah, we're not oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. For some reason. I see the word Photoshop. Hmm. But no, that almost. That's, yeah. Did it go? Oh, it's there. Is that Photoshop? It's in it, the back. It looks like, yeah, there's Adobe Photoshop. There it is. That's there Photoshop. Is. Oh, now it's, it's not. And maybe just reduce Lightroom. I see. Yeah, hide it. You can maybe hide yeah. it. Okay, let's try that. Nope, Lightroom. I'm going to get right, that. Right here. And we'll reduce that to there. There we go. That's it. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay, All so right. what are your layers? Okay, so let's start that over. So um, I brought my flash layer in uh, on top. Let me X this mask out, actually this one so i have my flash layer on top and then the ambient layers underneath once i hit my action um it put the the gray mask on here and then made all these other layers from from the those two layers so this is going to be uh basically right now what you're looking at is a 50 50 blend of the flash layer and the ambient layer only um but the rest of these layers are just kind of they're in here for some more uh fine tuning um, so this third one is going to be, it's set to darken mode and it's from the flash layer. So what I do here is, is it's just for bringing in, like controlling the highlights. So like you can see kind of over here where things look a little bit blown out. Um, you can, you can try to brush in some of that here. Oops. On the wrong here. There we go. So I'm going to just brush that in. Flows at 10%. So let me do that at 100. Here we go. So then you can see how it affects that image right there. So now it's just set to darken. So you can see how that's changing. So kick the highlights down a little bit. The next one is the um, color layer. So this is also reproduced from the flash layer, but it's set to color mode. And then it has a 50% mask on it. So you can kind of mask in things if you want to or mask things out. Um, it just seems to be the best place to start with color corrections um, for me. And then the top layer is a luminance layer. So this is going to bring in luminosity from the ambient layer. Um, set to luminosity mode with a black mask. So you would just paint in in these areas. And what I'll do here is I'll look at what the ambient layer looks like and then with the flash layer ticked back on. And if there's anything that I like better in the flash layer or in the ambient layer, I'll just brush it in on that layer. So you can see like this area here, like where these shadows are kind of hard. Um, if I take this and I brush in right here, softens that up and it won't affect the color. Um, much it does i can't say it doesn't do it at all because it kind of does sometimes but it's just for kind of hiding your tracks with the flash mostly um here's another space where like might use it just to kind of hide and get some softer stuff going on in there um but otherwise i might hit that just so it's a little less harsh some of that And you can see those changes that it made. So it's just to soften some shadows and stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's that's what I would say the blend is. Um, so I would just flatten it from there. So the next part, we'll talk about the color corrections. Um, this is how I do it in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to Select and then click Color Range. You can see how it's... It, chooses like I was choosing uh, I must have been on fixing some wood or something last time because it's already selecting all the tan stuff but we're going to start over here and start picking this area so if you hit shift and then click around you'll start picking up all those those like whites and all the stuff that we want to change here um I want to pick that up but it seems like it starts picking up too much so that's probably, let's see, we'll go down fuzziness. There we go. Pull that up a little bit. Put that on. There we go. 
So just messing with your fuzziness and then clicking around and trying to get get all those tones that you want to affect. You can kind of see how the floor is getting less selected here, but mostly the wall and the whites on the counter here are all chosen. Um, I'm going to pick on the backsplash too. A little bit more of this stuff just to get it all in there. All right. What is fuzziness? Is that just the like the feather? Yeah, like your um your threshold basically. So oh, so how far it'll go from the white color that you picked? Yeah, because it's gonna like some of these tones that it's gonna pick up in here are gonna be some of the similar tones that are gonna be in like the wood and stuff. So it might start selecting some of that stuff. Um, you can go in here and refine this choice more. Um, so say if you go to here and you go quick selection tool, um, you can just, oops, not that. Okay. What is going on here? There we go. That's not. All right. So hitting shift when you do that, that's going to add to it. There we go. So now I'm just going to try to pick up a little bit more of this stuff um, that it's not seeing. Um, this part is, I want this. Nope. Some of it's going to be tricky because it's like it wants to pick up more than what you want it to. But I would say this is pretty good. I might go with minusing out this. So if you hit option, it's going to um, do negative select. So then you can go over the parts of the wood that you don't want to get in there and, and choose that. And then it'll, it'll take that out of the selection, but this looks pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to take these chairs off. There we go. Now it's mostly only the white stuff that's chosen here. Um, and I, I think I'm okay with whatever's going on back in this area. Um, so we have this selection. Next thing I want to do is go to adjustments. I'm going to hit this hue and saturation. So now it creates this as a, as a mask. Um, so what you're going to do is choose your like selector, and then you can go to these points where you want to try to start pulling out stuff and just slide it down. So it's, it's only affecting yellows within that selection and it's desaturating to 44% so far. Um, and I'll just go around and if there's any hues that it's not really doing anything for, I'm gonna try to slide that down, but that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna flatten that again. And then that would be, that would be the image right there. There's a, it's a little bit dark in this area. So I'll hit like a dodge, I have a dodge and burn action here. If you set up a overlay layer, fill it with gray and set it, uh, set it to overlay, then go into your brush, hit white and set it to 10%. Um, you can go in here and just kind of dodge some stuff and kind of bring up some highlights or bring the luminosity up in a couple of these areas. Um, just to kind of bring some attention to like the stove area. Um, I think that's pretty good. And the next thing I want to do is I don't like how this handle is showing behind this area. So I'm just going to hit that, the remove tool and get that out of there. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Um, actually, the light stand. I don't like having that reflection in there too. So I'm going to just pull that out. There we go. The, the, smart, or the, the smart remove tool is super cool. Um, if you guys haven't used that yet, definitely give it a shot. Um, Have you run into problems with that tool at all, crashing your system? I haven't had to crash the system, but I've had to, I mean, I've tried to remove something and it didn't do a great job. So I had to basically go back through and, you know, get into the cloning or whatever. But I always give it a shot first to just see what it does. Yeah, um, there, is a, there is a bug in that tool. I talked to Adobe last week. and Every time I used it, um, well, not every time, but I could reproduce the error and they, you know, got online with me and it happened right, right as we were talking, which was fortunate. So they, it wasn't just me saying, oh, I think something was wrong. 
And basically, if you use it a lot on a lot of little things, I was removing hairs off of mm -hmm. a, a model's face. It just bumps up the memory. And I was running monitor, um, my system monitor, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. To show all the tasks and everything running. It just went up to 100% and then it crashed. It's oh, really yeah. interesting. And they don't know what's wrong yet. Lightroom's done that to me on some stuff, though. Um, yeah. yeah, not Photoshop hasn't. Um, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to show you guys how to straighten in Photoshop, too, real quick. Um, so you just drag out these lines. Um, I'm going to get this thing out of the way. It keeps blocking me. So I'm going to reproduce this layer. And then just hit Command T for transform and go into skew. And you're just going to drag these guys out and try to make those walls, those dominant lines, just follow on the on the guides there. A little bit more. There we go. Hit Enter. Flatten image again, and save. So let's see. Then we'll pull up Lightroom again. And they should be coming right back into here. All right. So that's the saved image. Now, my last thing I do is I just hit this uh, finishing interior. So can you guys see Lightroom now? Yeah. OK, cool. So finishing interior is just going to go through adding, add in more contrast, kind of pump up the saturation, the vibrance and stuff. Um, usually it does this transform, but we already fixed that in Photoshop, so I'm not going to let it do that. Um, and then you can kind of do any final touches here that you want to do, um, like remove, bring down the highlights or whatever. Always look for this spike. And I'm going to just bring that down to the same place I had it before. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. That's a finished image. Um, I'm going to show you in Lightroom how to do the same kind of color corrections. Uh, but let me go can back. I can I ask one or two real quick questions? Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Okay. In that that five image stack that you created in in um Photoshop, I was so fascinated with it. I didn't write it all down in time. Oh, it's bottom okay. Layer, bottom layer is ambient. Yep. Next layer is flash with the 50% gray over it in normal mode, right? Right. Okay. Um, this is the one I didn't get. The next layer is flash with a black layer. What was the blend mode? That was on uh, Lighten. Lighten. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then flash with. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm my bad. That one's on Darken. I'm sorry. Darken. Okay. Yeah. So and the reason for that. that too light. What, what what was that? That is too lighten. It. That's that's to darken. It's darken, but it'll lighten. No, it's going to darken. Oh. Okay. Um, so the reason for that layer, so since the the flash layer has already been reproduced on top and it's at a 50% blend, right? Mm -hmm. Once you put the flash layer on top again and you set it to darken, it it's going to only darken further from where it's at with that 50% blend. So if you have highlights that are too strong, you brush it in over that area. That's okay. what I do with my that's, window holes, basically. The, the, and the sunlight coming in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then flash layer, 50% in color mode. Yep. So that's and basically reproducing the color, just kind of double enforcing the color onto that blend. Because mm -hmm. um, you so, took the color out in the ambient. Yeah. 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 So now I'm trying to make the, the, um, the flash layer is going to be the dominant color layer. So it's going to pull most of the color from that. You can run into problems with it and like weird areas in the shadows or something. There might be like a more of an orange hue or something like that, but you can brush it out or um, on that same layer, you can uh, don't on not on the mask, but on the layer, select the color that you want to paint and then paint it in on that area and it'll fix it most of the time. Okay. Okay. Final layer was ambient with a black mask in luminance mode. Yeah, luminosity. Or luminosity. That, that's basically just to hide shadows and stuff. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, no problem. All right, so with this one, uh, I'm going to just hit, this is the ambient uh, layer again. And I'm just going to hit my in-camera preset here to try to get it to um, look halfway normal. Um, and I'm going to hit this up to my area that I like. Boom. And then we'll kind of bring some highlights down. 
bring some shadows up and this is just going to be for the sake of fixing the colors in photo and uh, in Lightroom. Okay. Um, you could do this with, with the image that you blended and brought back into Lightroom where you could do it on an ambient layer. It doesn't really matter. Um, what I'll do here though, is open up the mask and then you go to range, select color range. And once it's ready, I'm going to select this whole area right here, just to try to get a, a wide range of those tones that I'm not liking over here. And then it'll create that mask, right? Now, Dave, what you were saying was some, you'll get, uh, it's hard to kind of differentiate from some of these warm tones and in, in the walls here. So what you want to do is make a subtract mask, hit color range again, and then select these cabinets. And then it should minus a lot of that from the mask. And once you do that, you can refine it, bring the re refinement down. And then it's going to, it's kind of like the fuzziness. So now it's only going to be selecting it's, it's, it's being like a hard, it's like a hard no on, on the whites or anything outside of that color range. So we might have to do another one real quick for the floor down here. Let that go. We'll pull the fuzziness down again, but you can see how it's, it's building up this mask. I'll do another one over here and pick this area. Oops, did something wrong. Let's add another one. Okay. Get you this out, fine down. So now we, we mostly have all those tones that we were looking at, just the walls and stuff. And most of this stuff is taken off. Um, so now we'll just bring that saturation down and try about negative 50. Let's see what happens here. That's pretty good. Um, you could go in here and make, you know, kind of subtract with a brush if you see some areas that like you're not really digging. Um, but for the most part, it looks like the cabinets and the floors are still a good color and the walls are fairly neutralized, even in this area here where the color cast is really strong. Um, but that was pretty much the way I would do a color correction in Lightroom. Um, hey, Gary. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any reason why your ambient was so dark? I mean, you're just correcting color with, or you're removing color and you're using it for shadow. So maybe it doesn't matter and you didn't care or. or the, the reason I, I used the dark ambient layer was because these highlights, when you, uh, record, okay. when you record the frame, um, you're going to want like in the raw, you're going to want as much detail as possible. And when I, on my brighter ambient, all this stuff was blown out so bad. Right. Okay. Um, so I would rather take the image where there's information in the highlights and then bring up the shadows um, because we have so much latitude, you know? Um, okay. That was my next um, uh, thing I was going to say. Maybe it was because of the highlights. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. And then there's something else you could do here. Uh, these maps are pretty cool. Um, but you can kind of get a, a linear gradient going over that area and then bring your highlights down again over that part. Or you could even bring your exposure down a little bit to try to button it up a little bit or just kind of bring in some more detail. But overall, for an ambient layer, I mean, you could deliver this picture pr pretty much um, for the MLS and stuff. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, so that's, in a nutshell, that was that. Um, do you guys want me to do anything else as far as that goes? Or yeah, I have a question. Um, the, yeah. the kitchen shot that I saw this morning on your face on Facebook, maybe it's my monitor, maybe it's the, I don't know. It looks a lot warmer. Did you tone it in any way later? Or even the walls look like a creamy sort of off-white. Maybe that's how it is. Um, and I'm just looking at it you know, on, on your monitor in Lightroom, but Let's see. did you yeah, do anything extra to to me. after that? This one, this one does look more neutral the way that it got processed right now. Okay. Um, I might've tuned it up a little bit in the, uh, might've just warmed it up in the, in the temperature like this, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's what I was. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, sometimes like if I'm editing late at night or something, uh, 
my monitor you know in your eyes and stuff yeah. it just happens you know yeah. like it's not going to be identical every time but for the most part this is this is pretty much what i what i sent out okay um i was just wondering if you did anything extra later after you, you did what you showed us just now no the so it was just corrections um i, I remember what you were talking about with color grading and i've seen i've seen people do it i i don't really i think we're trying to go for more natural stuff um the guys that i've seen do it are more like an interior like an architectural photographer or something like and they have a style that they always do yeah um, and it's, it's almost like a filter you know um and for instagram and stuff like it's you could I, I filtered some stuff here and there um just to kind of give it some more drama but when i'm sending it to a client i i usually just kind of go for as neutral as possible um maybe a slight warmth just so it doesn't look cool um but yeah that's this is pretty much what i would go for very nice yeah thank you mm -hmm. um so I think that'll be i mean that's that for for that part um did you guys want me to show you anything else about this image or should i stop sharing and we can talk about some other stuff or i'm good yeah, yeah. all right cool we got a lot out of that thank you gary no yeah problem. thanks um yeah i want to try to bring in any hard skills and stuff that i can into these calls too so um if you have questions that come up throughout the week you message me and uh, i'll bring it up when we do the call We got you shoot mostly real estate mostly yeah but i mean i i'll shoot whatever though um i've been working on a um project that my my buddy his kids in pop warner and they want me to do the the whole team photos mm -hmm. so i've been trying to line that the whole process up but uh most mostly all my clients are realtors yeah me too yeah some some interior designers some architects but mostly realtors yeah, I'm trying to um trying to get there. I want to start working with people that I don't know more more high quality image expectations. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm in the same boat. I mean, I have higher, no complaints. higher budgets. <laughs> I have no complaints over my real estate clients. They've been great. Uh, yeah. I just want to do more creative kind of serious same. stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. It it kind of makes it more fun when you can yeah bring out more lights and bring out more lenses and spend yeah. more time. Uh, I'm all for spending a lot of time on site. I love shooting, so I'm trying to try to do that as much as I can. I got a weird job thing thrown at me today, and I'm I'm kind of not even sure how to approach pricing it or anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's semi-commercial. It was a, a local um, oh, landscaper, mm -hmm. and they want me to go and shoot properties that they've done. Um, the thing is, I've seen some of the properties that they've done and like, I'm a guy, I don't look at flowers, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> notice these, they're really, really good. Um, and this probably doesn't mean anything to you guys, but they do all the Mormon temples, which in Utah is like really big. Oh yeah. Uh, they do all the landscaping at the, the international airport. So they're not small jobs and they're not. You know, they're not just drive by, take a picture and we'll put it on Instagram sort of thing. And I have a meeting with them Friday to learn more about, you know, what what to do or what they're expecting. And actually, I one of the things their marketing person told me was, and we'll show you why we got rid of our last photographer. And I thought, oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. That's um, good, but I, yeah. very helpful. <laughs> but I, I'm just not even sure how to approach pricing this or to even, you know. I, I've never been faced with the, you know, because conceivably this could be, you know, just drive by, throw a drone up, get a couple of aerial shots, you know, and move on to the next one. But um, why don't you think about your time? Think mm -hmm. about, find out how long you think it's going to take okay. based on what they want and have them make you a shot list, mm -hmm. you know, adhere to that and then and kind of estimate how much your time you're going to spend at each site and then, you know, Invo or not invoice but do an estimate based on that that's kind of what i do time is is everything i think i don't do by the image 
You yeah. Know, mm -hmm. Except for real estate, sometimes they want, you know, more images than than they need. But <laughs> yeah. um, I found that basing it on time, even if you don't tell them that you're basing it on time, definitely mm -hmm. seems to work. Okay. Yeah, I would I would look at like a day rate, half day rate kind of thing. Um, and, you know, you're going to want some more information about what they need, you know, yeah. um, and try to just go off of that. But if you have a day rate or a half day rate in mind, um, what I usually do is I'll spend that four or five hours or that eight hours or whatever shooting. And, you know, I'm, my editing time is also equated into my, or it's included in my day rate. So if I'm going to shoot for four hours, I figure I'm going to edit for another four hours. Mm -hmm. So I do, I pretty much double up on like what, um, not quite double up, but I try to bring that into the to quote too. I have to, you know, obviously we have to edit. Um, so, and then another thing is if they're going to have multiple locations and you have to drive to multiple sites yeah. or whatever, I would, I would think about that too. Um, well, I'm thinking too, I might be able, depending again on what they say on Friday, it may be something, Oh, I'm down in Provo, you know, shooting this anyway, I'll drop by that temple and, pick up a couple of shots you know if they say we just want these picked up over the next month or two you know i've got a lot more latitude to do those when i'm in those areas mm -hmm. you know again we'll see what they say but yeah um yeah i want i want to go fly the drone at the airport too <laughs> oh yeah yeah there's that <laughs> <laughs> the um so how many mormon like is there's a difference between like a LSD church and then a Mormon temple, right? Yeah, there is. Um, okay. I'll give you a quick lesson and hopefully won't bore you too much. Um, the Mormon temples are like sacrosanct. They're sacred territory. And you have to be a Mormon to even go in them. Mm -hmm. um, you and I could not go in them at all, but we can go on the grounds. And, and to be honest, they are very, very pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have one down in La Jolla and it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's actually I feel like it's one of the most pretty buildings in the in the county. Yeah, well, I think second to Disneyland, these guys, they've got, you know, the, the plants and everything growing so well. And that's what I mean. I've seen these guys work before and it's just incredible stuff. So um, and I've looked at their website and, and I don't think their pictures are all that good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to make an impact with them because might be a pretty nice job for you too. Yeah, I think I think you will. I think you'll be yeah. able to make a, a big difference in the way their website looks for sure. I hope so because th they need a whole new website, honestly. Oh yeah. And this is just the landscaping company. Oh look, somebody just texted me. Gary knows what he's talking about. No. Oh. <laughs> What if it was it Mary? <laughs> no. Kelly Kish up in Portland. What's that? Kelly Kish up in Portland. Oh yeah. 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 Kelly's uh awesome. I actually met up with her recently. Oh, did you go to Finland? No. Um she was in Palm Springs the same day oh. I was in Palm Springs and we okay. ended up meeting up for dinner. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, she and I were texting all day while she was doing that shoot. Oh, cool. I've known her for like four years, but I've never met her face to face. Oh, yeah. She came to one of my workshops um, probably four oh. or five years ago, probably oh. six years ago now. Um, yeah, she's super cool, though. Love her. Yeah. 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 She's yeah Mary uh, Mary was the one that told me that she was in town. And she's like, hey, Kelly's over there. You guys should meet her. <laughs> so, oh, like, yeah, she said I met up with the photographer, but she never said who. So Yeah. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about her in the last one. I was just saying my friend uh, went to the the Finland one and all that, but she was saying that it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want to um, go. I was talking with Mike the other day about doing. He might be coming out, and he and I might be doing something which could be kind of fun. So I might be teaching Mike, which would be really fun. Really? Yeah. That's Can not. You... I've never met him face to face. I've I've chatted with him a little bit, but who's this? Mike. Mike Mike Kelly oh yeah he lives right near me actually I see him every once in a while oh is that right very nice guy yeah yeah we're cool. gonna have lunch one of these days but he's always traveling yeah he just came like out with a book do you guys see that book that he did I did I want to get that it's beautiful mm -hmm. of course he's yeah. photographing supermodels I mean every house is incredibly you know beautiful 
Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a cool book. Yeah. Maybe Mary can get it for me for a Father's Day or something. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> um, so there's a, a handful of other people in here. Does anybody have any questions they wanted to talk about? Um, I know we've been kind of dominating this with with our, you know, with the demo and then little chatting and stuff. But if anybody has a question, I'm here to answer it. So otherwise, we can just keep chatting it up. I don't really care. Bunch of shy people. Yeah, everybody's being shy. David, Sorry. I have a question for you, David. And this is totally off the wall. There's, but there's another David here, me or or David Moore. You. Oh. you. Does 101 where it goes right by where the, the pier is, is that still got all the stoplights on it? Or has 101 <laughs> bypassed? I've been here in a while. No, I have not. It's going through major construction right now. They're widening it through Montecito and everything. But I know what you're talking about. When I was in high school, we would take it was an old, old coast highway road is what it was. Yeah. No, it's a regular freeway now. Wow. There is the, the old coast highway is still there, but it's not where you're thinking. It kind of goes around a little bit. But there aren't any stoplights at all. Oh, wow. It's freeway. Oh. Yeah, it's a major freeway. Yeah. Well, for a long time, I worked at uh, KUIT. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So you know John Palminteri, probably. Yeah, I do know John yeah. Palminteri. Yeah. He's yeah. still working. Wow. Let's see. King Harris was there when I was there. I don't um, know who that is. I've only been here since okay. 2000. I'm from the Bay Area. I used to work at Apple, and I moved down here after I left Apple in 99. And so I haven't been here that long, 25 years. Well, I guess it's a long time. Yeah, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah. I like it here. It's expensive, though. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, my wife and I got cool. oh it's crazy expensive yeah have you ever um camped over at el capitan i've not camped there but i've been up there quite a bit we've uh we camped yeah. over there and it we had a cool time it was fun nice, huh? um, yeah there, we stayed in a yurt and oh you did well, i never cool. even heard of a yurt before we went there <laughs> but, uh, but it was cool they have a yurt thing a park or something a resort up near big sur I go mm. up there quite a bit also. I love landscape photography, so I'm driving to Carmel and Big Sur quite often. Oh, cool. You got to hit up Wayne. <laughs> yeah, I do. We have, Wayne and I have lunch and dinner. and all, Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I know Wayne pretty well. Years. This whole thing, used, we used to be on MySpace, this whole group. Oh, really? PFRE group. Yeah, way back oh, yeah. in 2009. And that was, that was before it was my time. <laughs> interesting time. You were just in diapers then, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still in high school. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But yeah, Wayne's a good guy. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's always helpful. Yeah, he is. I'm going to see him in April for that little conference there. Oh yeah, I was thinking about that. I think uh, they've got one seat left. So do they? Yeah, if you go, definitely we'll have dinner or something. Yeah, yeah. I would go mostly just to see everybody. Um, basically, because I don't really need, you know, the, the classes and stuff, but I mean, I'm glad I, I met you, Gary, because there are some processing things that I haven't been doing. I've really been become complacent with real estate photography. I just do my thing and come home, mm -hmm. get a paycheck. But now I want to step it up and I'm a lot more interested than I used to be. So it's a lot of fun when you can do interior design work and architect type stuff. Totally. Yeah. So <clears throat> this has been helpful. Well, I'm glad. Um, are you guys talking about the Shifters Convention? No, he's there's a there's one that um, Wayne is doing with Frazier, um, Frazier, and also um, there's one other Almeida? guy. Yeah, yeah. Frazier. He's also very good. Um, who's the other guy they're doing? Um, Tony Colangelo. Uh, yeah, Cal oh. Calcagno or something. I don't oh. remember his last name. Colangelo. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He he'll he's be the, there as well. He's the best. I was actually just talking with him today. Yeah, I've um, not met him. He is amazing. Um, he's he's uh, he's my coach actually. So um, in his his comp, I went to his workshop with Brandon Cooper in Atlanta a few years mm -hmm. ago, and uh, he's super nice. Well, they're both Canadians, so obviously they're nice. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, but Tony is super smart, and he has a tutorial on compositions that yeah. I can't recommend enough. He's um, 
he nails it like as far as explaining why and all that. and I'm a big why person so like I want to know why I want to compose a shot like that or why I got to do this or why I got to do that and he explains that all really well I never was a big fan of rule of thirds you know I thought it was a, a cool suggestion but you know just all move on mm -hmm. and the way he put it and explained the why mm -hmm. of why you want to do that you know to relax the viewer so that the Anyway, I everything is rule of thirds now to me. I I'm always, yeah. If I don't compose for it, I crop for it. In definitely, Le I, I do the same exact thing, and I learned it from him too. Yep, and I yeah. just I think my pictures are so much better because of it. Yeah, totally. um, yeah. The balance. Another, another good person to learn from is Scott Francis. Uh, I don't know if you know it, you know him at all. He's a New York photographer. He's been working for Architectural Digest for decades and mm. he teaches at the palm springs photo festival and everything he does is natural light no flash at all mm. of course he has a team of retouchers and that's the downside um, oh i know who you're talking about he's extremely good yeah is look he, he has him. a tutorial too right like a, he, had he a has a tutorial it's like 30 bucks and it's, yeah, it's had, actually was, very very good. good i have but that if you like too. composition dave You'll love this tutorial. What's yeah. I was Francis? watching some of it last night, but what? Scott Francis. Scott Francis? Scott Francis, yeah, F-R-A-N-C-E-S. Yeah, um, I talked with Tony about that tutorial, actually, and he, I heard, like, we both got the, the feedback online about that tutorial, and people were hating on it, and I was like, I thought that was a no-brainer for 30 those, bucks. And, those people don't get it. They, they, yeah. what he says, uh, this is years of wisdom that he's been doing. Yeah, and he arranges everything. If if this table, if this chair leg is interfering with the table leg, he'll move it. I mean, he's very very meticulous. Yeah, about styling the shot and everything, and he's great. It's very something very. I, something I remember him saying in that tutorial too is that he doesn't go and fluff the house. Like he likes it to look like somebody just sat in the chair. Or like, <laughs> yeah, that's I was right. like, what? <laughs> for the most part, for the most yeah. part, he's yeah. exaggerating a little bit, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. I did two workshops with him down in Palm Springs, and it was just wonderful. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about composition and uh, ambient light and and all that stuff, and uh, it was very very good. It's thirty bucks or whatever for that tutorial. Yeah, it's only about it. two or three yeah. hours long. Yeah, it's very very yeah. good. Anybody listening, if you don't have that, go buy it because it's, <laughs> it's worth it. It's... I'll write Scott and I'll say, "Hey, we just sold a bunch of your tutorials." <laughs> yeah, tell him. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. And yeah, his work is insane. He's very good. <laughs> Another oh. guy, Joe Fletcher, was part of that um, workshop down in Palm Springs. And he came into our, I took the Scott Francis one. And Scott Hargis was there. And you know, you guys mm. know Scott Hargis, right? Oh, yeah. From the old times. Yeah. He was also, he was taking uh, Fletcher, Joe Fletcher's um, class. And they, we kind of mixed a little bit. They overlap a little bit, which was interesting. And Joe's a whole different type. Uh, shooter than than Scott is both mm. very very good. Which which uh which um convention was that? Palm Springs Film Festival. I mean, uh, photo festival. It's it's been around for decades. It's not uh, just architectural stuff then, right? No, no. There's oh, okay. all kinds of very very well known. Peter Lindbergh was at one of them just a couple before he died. I don't know if you know him. Uh -uh. Fashion photographer is one of the best. Um, uh, who else is down there? Uh, I don't know. I can't, of course, I can't think. Nadav Kondur, I don't know if you know him. He's a portraiture mm -hmm. from London. Um, but they're big guys. I mean, these guys are top of their game. Hmm. Seriously. When, uh, when did that one happen? Well, right. it stopped because of COVID. Mm. And now they're doing just portfolio reviews. I think it started up again last year. Um I have to I'll have to check on that, but I'm pretty sure they had it last year. Usually it's later in the year year like October or so, September maybe. Mm. Um but if it if makes sense. It's totally it's worth hot. it. The courses yeah, are what? Love to go out there. Yeah, it's really it's really close to you too. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close. I go out there for shoots sometimes. So yeah. I like to go to Joshua Tree and when I'm when I'm not at the conference and just take pictures out there, it's pretty fun. Yeah. There's a um there's a cool uh, new thing out there. It's like a Airstream Park. 
where you can like Airbnb uh, Airstream and you have a, my sister-in-law went and did it. And um, you have a fire pit outside of there and all that. And it seems pretty cool. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> Francis is incredible. I'm just on his site now and just. Yeah, he's very, very good. Yeah. And I don't know how he does it all ambient because I can't get out, I can't get past color casts and stuff. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I know what you mean. I it's mean, such talk a about pain in the ass. We used um, to call it what clown vomit, I guess, was the term. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the really bad color cast. The HDR stuff. Yeah. 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 I don't like HDR at all, but um, Scott either. doesn't use HDR. But his retype, well, you saw the workshops. His yeah. retype, you saw her work on some stuff. She's just kind of, that wasn't a good. It wasn't really a good, it was more of an introduction to what his retouchers do. It really mm -hmm. didn't show you how to do things. It just, they went down through some of the layers. It's, oh, we do this and this and this, and Scott likes it like that. And yeah. he's real big on correcting the geometry on on wide angle lenses on the sides. He's yeah. very, very meticulous about that. And we went through that some of that as well. Yeah, but you can is... also do what you do, use a longer lens if you can, but you can't always do that. Right. And uh, it's hard to correct the distortion once it's there you know yeah Photoshop. there's a it's couple there's cool. a couple of tricks to it and i mean i've i've used a few different tricks to try to you know when i was doing like a high-end shoot or whatever yeah it gets tough especially like with a 17 uh millimeter yeah. tilt shift and like the, the you know it gets the distortion straight but then you still have the stretching that happens right. you gotta kind of like select and then bring it in and then bring it in and bring it up and it gets and changing that distorts for the rest of the image in some yeah. areas and that the lines don't meet up. yeah it's not easy no it's totally true so i was wondering how much those retouchers charge because the, i know there's they're the about overseas guys are cheap and then this i think that place is in new york it's like a firm yeah right? he uses, it's called house tribeca and i mm -hmm. just actually had a beauty shot retouched by them and they're about 200 bucks an hour or so Mm. so when you think about it if scott can shoot you know 10 to 15 shots in a day all those shots go to the retoucher he doesn't really touch he tells them what they what he wants and they kind of know him really well but yeah it gets expensive yeah you know? and he talks about rolling that in he goes you should have a retoucher on these jobs they can do way better than we can you know and yeah most of us <laughs> well that's their that's their specialty that's what they do yeah exactly yeah. But I've used them on a couple of jobs and uh, not not for 15 images or certainly not on a real estate job, but they're very good. Yeah. What What's their name again? I'm gonna House Tribeca. House I Tribeca. think they call them, I think it's just House Studios now. Let me see. Look them up. But a lot of, when you click on the architecture of that, that site, you'll see Scott's, a lot of Scott's work. House he also Studios has a website. And that's a cool portfolio, huh? <laughs> What's that? That would be a cool portfolio. Have a bunch of his pictures in your your portfolio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, housetribeca.com. There it is. Looks like they changed their name to House Studios, but oh yeah, House Studios NYC now. They changed their name. Mm. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was a new that's a new thing. But go to selected works. And then uh, portfolio, go to architecture, and you'll see. Yeah, it's Scott's almost all work. Scott Francis. All of this is natural light. And some of it's, you know, you can, some of these images you can do with natural light pretty easily, but some of them are just incredible. But he uses blackout cloth and everything else to, to shape the light. And if there's too much flare, he'll, you know, cover the window and, and do different tricks and things. Just gorgeous. There we go, portfolio. Yeah, he's done some beautiful work. Oh, yeah. Some of this. They're always putting different stuff up here. Oh, the New York resident. That's the one he used in the tutorial, which you see more images than what were in the tutorial. I think that's the one. Oh, yeah, I see it. I don't know if that's the one. There, it, I forget. Let me see. I've seen um I've seen that exterior twilight before. Which one? The one at the at the bottom. I want to say I saw that on Facebook or something, or maybe that was on the tutorial. I don't remember. Well, I entered that one in PFRE and said I did. 
yeah they, oh here it is the brooklyn residence that's the one it's on page one of the architecture one and it's the second row from the bottom in the middle brooklyn uh, residence. There it is. i think that's the same yeah that's the same house that he did in the tutorial and the pictures are beautiful very yeah, moody, they are. very moody and uh there's a lot of color without it being like oversaturated yeah, yeah there's one of these uh one of these pictures like the second one to the last one where it's like looking down the hallway into the living room like that looks like it has flash in it to me it doesn't <laughs> I, I, it's crazy <laughs> yeah i think i think it's just a bathroom light or some some light that's in the middle of the image right yeah his big thing is you have a foreground you have a middle ground and you have a background there's always three yeah. three layers to his images because it, yeah. it takes it takes the viewer through the image yeah i learned a lot of little nuggets on that that uh tutorial yeah, it's for 30 bucks man it's it's worth three times four times that i think 100 percent. yeah it's good stuff that you're not going to forget it's it's solid base stuff i think um since you guys know a lot more of these workshops uh um adam's asking if you guys know of any that are hosted in south florida oh yeah barry grossman barry grossman yeah i think he's in south florida i think he does workshops out in the out that way um i don't you ever heard of him um i i want to say i've heard the name but i'm not familiar yeah he does a lot of stuff out there um i've taken some online coaching kind of stuff from him and he does some interesting things with flash and <clears throat> with photoshop and light hmm. on simulating simulating light in photoshop so a lot of people are afraid of a flash but this is i don't know more palatable to them or something but hmm. um it's pretty interesting some of it i want to check that guy's stuff out i don't do a lot of that because you know when you do that in photoshop you don't see real shadows being cast in it's more like a like a template that's put on top of the image yeah but some of the stuff can be really convincing. I think it's barrygrossman.com or something. Okay. Hope you got that, Adam. Um, all right, guys, it's it's six. I'm gonna we gotta bounce out of here. Me and Mary's gonna eat dinner. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Too. You too, Dave. And what's your name, Mary? Mary. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mary. Mary and Gary. Yeah. <laughs> we have a dog named Larry. Planned that, didn't you? <laughs> and a kid named Mo. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we have a dog. We have three dogs. One oh, of them's name is one's name is Mochi. So that was pretty close. <laughs> oh, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, great but... meeting you guys. You guys are super talented. It's really cool to kind of, even though I don't know anything that you guys are saying, it's cool to hear. You know, <laughs> all the different. <laughs> You know, when you have a, a networking thing like this, it's cool to bounce ideas off of and you it know is. pick up yeah. little nuggets from each to each of each other. Each each other. Sorry, I can't talk today. Long day, but yeah. very cool to meet you guys. Really Thanks, cool. Babe. I appreciate you helping. Gary, wow. can I ask one last question? Just, well, oh, yeah, we can sure. all help each other too. You know that. You know we all share. Yeah, and I, I think that's really unique among the. I well for this industry I um I'm, last time you know we were talking afterwards and um I, I'm not here to sell any of my tutorials or try to get any money off you guys for this or whatever like this is an open forum I just want to connect with you guys and help where I can so it's not like don't feel like you can't jump in and say something it's we're just here to kind of hang out and have a good time and hopefully get some good info across to everybody um Adam, what did you did? What was your question, or Alex? Oh, <clears throat> I'm just wondering: Are all your luminosity masks is all manual? Are you are you checking into anything like Lumenzio or uh, Mike um, Kelly was using TK eight? I think it's TK nine now. Mm. So when I if I'm it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm like blending an image and I'm going to use luminosity mask for that, then I use the um. I forget what it's called now. I had the action. Raya, Raya yeah, Pro. Raya, Raya Pro. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just starting to use Raya that. Pro. Um, and then once you figure out how you can make those masks, you can kind of, you can make them yourself, you know. Um, but Raya Pro does a pretty good job of just generating all the masks you might need. And then I go in there and um, I'm not sure 
I didn't watch his tutorial on how to use it. I just kind of understood it and I kind of figured out my own thing. But what's been working for me is if I'm going to put multiple ambient layers together, what I'll do is I'll start with my base layer or like my like the middle ground and then I'll put gray masks um, on all the other ones. Right. Or I'll just add a dark mask. But I, I brush in instead of just like do the selection and then create mask from the selection. I'll I create a dark mask and then put the selection or activate the selection and then brush in the areas that I want to do instead of letting Photoshop do all that work because um, you'll get some weird stuff happening when you're mixing like pulling all sh like pulling the shadows up. It just ends up kind of weird looking. So um, I'd like to be a little bit more. Um, uh, like spot treatments you know what i mean yeah yeah by the way this is a, a good time for i'm in vietnam so this is a, oh, wow. a good time yeah what's uh what time is it already it, must, it looks like uh it's well let's see yeah. so five is eight mm. eight eight a.m right on what i, I want to I like ask you a bunch of questions about it we got to go but um next time <laughs> jump in and we can okay. talk some more about it yeah this is a good time i can right. i can I can get up at, at uh, you know, 7.45, no, no problem. Sick. But some, sometimes people have something and it's like, you know, uh, four or five in the mornings. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, uh, most, Phil usually helps me host or he's going to help me host um, going forward too. But um, his kid's sick today, so he couldn't make it tonight, but he prefers the PM one. So I just try to do whenever is convenient. Um, but that's cool. I'll keep that in mind. Cool. All right, fellas. Um, All right. Adios. Great week, everybody. All right. Take it easy. Nice too. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, no worries.